Okay. So, yeah, in a previous class, we covered on the different types of communication, like verbal and nonverbal. So, in today's session, uh, we can talk about or we can look into listening skill or active listening. So, even before we could start with our session, request one of you all to please uh, start the class with a word of prayer. Yes, you can unmute and pray. Hey guys, this is Dylan for the safety of the one to learn about the truth and the truth that has been made. That comes with an amazing and our heart's God. And just want to ensure that you're about to learn life skills, God, and we need as well as learning more about human life skills. And as best as I want to talk to you about the truth and the truth is good. And I hope this is a great wisdom. Thank you so much for everything you do. It's great. Amen. Thank you, Asha, for praying. Okay. I'll just present a short presentation. Share the slide that we have. Okay. In today's class, we're going to talk about uh, listening or active listening. So let's look into the details. So listening is important because good listening is probably the easiest way to connect with the other people and build relationships. So active listening is the opposite of passive listening. So what happens? We have probably experienced this in a lifetime. So the person you are talking to might technically be hearing some of what you're saying and they are tuned out and okay, and they're just not mentally engaged with what you're saying. And as the speaker, this can be very dissatisfying or very discouraging at times when people really aren't paying attention to us. Like, why, are, why am I even talking in the first place? But an active listening looks, sounds, and feels obvious. Active listening means listening completely. But before anybody does that well, there are two secrets or two prerequisites to active listening. What is it? Number one, you have to commit that you have to put aside whatever might be distracting you and make listening a real priority. So good listening is first and foremost a choice that you make every time somebody speak. So number two, it's probably a practice like any skill. You have to work at it. So the good news is that listening is not mysterious or complicated. So let's talk about four qualities of active listening. So what are they? So as we study, we can also learn to put them into our practice. So the first one is in active listening. It involves nonverbal communication, and there are two sides to it. So. On one hand, you're demonstrating that you're engaged and paying attention non-verbally. You put your device completely away. You make eye contact. Your body posture is open and oriented toward the other person. Now, on the other side, you're also noticing the speaker's non-verbal cues. They are an expression. You listen with your eyes. And part of that means that you're noticing what's happening with the person visually. 
on the mood, on the emotions, and um, then the, they are showing or do they look nervous or frustrated or annoyed? By that, you know, we can pick on that the active observation on the nonverbal communication. So secondly, we look into the active listening that involves on the verbal communication. Again, there are two sides to it. So the most obvious part is asking good questions, probably the most, uh, you know, in the common pattern that the good listener could demonstrate is that they ask a good question and then they let the speaker fully answer it. Like a good mental health therapist will ask thoughtful questions and then they stop talking for a while and then the client speaks. Honestly, what we are paying for in many cases is just somebody to listen to us carefully so that a good question is a huge part of listening pie. And the other part of verbal communication is those small utterances that show the other person that we are actually following them or we are actually listening to them. Or like, I hear you, that makes sense. Sometimes it's not even full words. We just uh, might, uh, you know, just utter some sounds like, mm, uh, maybe, okay. You know, these are the short, small utterances that we can affirm the other person that we are listening. So these uh, little utterances keeps us engaged and affirm the other person that we are actively following them or we are actively listening to them. And the third active listening involves in responding to what somebody said. So the pattern goes like this, like you ask a question and they respond for however long that takes. And at the end of that talking term, you give an informed response to them. So let's say you just asked a person what they have been up to lately. That's your question. And in they talking, turn they tell you that they have been doing um, diving lately. So you actively listen for a while. They are talking. And at the end of their conversation, now it's your turn. And this is where you show that you have actively listened to that person. And now you also showed by your body language that you were interested and, uh, you know, by paying attention to them. Now that now you can respond to them by saying, this sounds very exciting sport or that's really cool that you're doing that. Or you could ask another follow-up question like, I had no idea that you were into diving or how did you first get into that? Or of course, you could do a little bit of both just like, uh, like I just did both. So you could make an informed or reflective statements and then ask a follow-up question. So the key here is for us to respond what they just been saying. So what we don't want to do is like look at them blankly and not react to what they're doing or what they are talking or what they're communicating. But uh, we we'll probably had somebody to do this to us, like you tell them about the part of your day or something about your life and then don't react. They just have this, uh, you know, a kind of a stone face. That's not, that's actually not an active listening. So you want a, uh, you know, a 
you want a a, a, a credit uh, a reward for your active listening then you have to respond to what they just said so the fourth one here is keep the focus on them and let them talk now this one might seem obvious because we are listening but when we decide to go into that listening mode just make a decision that this is gonna be all about the other person talking and not about us resist the temptation to jump in without your own story or to change the subject to your favorite topic keep the talking turn or keep let's keep our talking turn and question aside and then stick to whatever topic they are the other person is interested to share it now eventually once they are done plenty of talking there will usually be an opportunity later in the conversation for us to share our experience or thoughts on what they have shared so the thumb rule is to decide at least the first half of the conversation to purely be active in listening so i hope this four tips help us uh, you know uh, help us to listen completely to the other person and by not interrupting them in their conversation so i'm just asking the class so which one of these tips uh you think that is needed for us at our work at our business at our ministry you can share it you can just unmute and share your views uh what do you think is very important in active listening and how we can actually uh put it in practice so some of you all can share your thoughts even before we could move can i yes please by listening and not interrupting by listening and not interrupting okay the other person anyone else can unmute and share Uh, eye contact yes i contact body language yes brother thank you anyone else by asking questions thanks asha anyone in the class yeah okay so we understand that listening is so important because it is important we see that many top employers provide listening skill training to their employees so good listening skill can lead to better customer satisfaction or uh, great product productivity with fewer mistakes and it also increases the sharing of the information that it can turn to lead to more creativity or innovative in their work and we also see that many successful leaders and entrepreneurs credit their success to effective listening we have one such a, uh, a leader richard Brain branson frequently he quotes listening as one of the main factors behind the success of virgin so what is it the point here is effective listening is a skill that underpins all the positive human relationships and it spends some time thinking 
about and how to develop this listening scale into us because they are the building blocks of success. So we see the good listening skill also has its benefits in our personal life. So what are the benefits? Did I put it here? Just give me a minute. OK, this is for the next. So we see listening is not as same as hearing. Some of the benefits we are talking about, some of the benefits. And we see that the first point here is listening is not the same as hearing. So what is it? Yes, hearing refers to the sound that enters our ear in a physical process that is given to us where we can hear. Understand until there's some problem with the hearing. But listening requires more than that. It requires focus, concentrated effort, both mental and something physical as well. So listening means paying attention not only to the story, but how it's been told uh, in the usage of the language, in the tone, the voice that a person uses and about the body posture. So in other words, it's been aware of both verbal and non-verbal messages. So our ability to listen effectively depends on the level to which we perceive and understand the message. So listening is not a passive process. In fact, listening can and should at least be engaged in the process as a speaker. When we say the phrase active listening, it's used to describe this process of being fully involved. So that's what um, we see. I'm just changing the slide. OK. We see Dr. Rachel Naomi Remen says, she says, the most basic and the powerful way to connect to another person is to listen. Just listen. She says, perhaps the most important thing we ever give each other is our attention. The second point we discuss in the benefits of active listening is we spend a lot of time listening. We spend a lot of time listening. So here we have, um, just give me a minute, let me change the slide. Time spent on communication by Adler Rosenfeld. OK, so his point of uh, 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 he, he did a lot of researches. And according to his research, here's what he says. He says, adults spend an average of 70% of their time engaged in some sort of communication. So on an average, 45% spent on listening when compared to 30% of speaking, 16% reading, and 9% writing. So a standard, uh, a lot of time, according to this graph or according to his research, we see that a lot of time is spent on listening. So it is actually worth that we take that extra time to ensure that we are listening effectively. So the third point here under active, the benefits of active listening is the purpose of listening. So the very purpose of listening is the effective listening is an very important skill that one needs to develop in their lifetime. So why do you think listening is important? My arm was up some time back. Sorry, I didn't notice, Charles. Please go ahead. I'm oh. sorry. Yeah. OK. Um. Uh, in the, the other point, when you were talking about uh, paying attention to, to the sound, 
and the body language, um, I find it very, very practical uh, when you are listening to someone and you are actively listening, you are with them. At every point they are talking, you are with them and you you are already putting what they call uh, a pictures. You are picturing exactly what they are telling you. You are trying to formulate and be with them and try to think as they are the next. So when you are actively listening, it's like you are with them. You, you are telling the story with them to a level that you are actively thinking what is coming next. That is when you are actively listening to someone who is talking to you. And uh, to the question that you have asked, why is it uh, important? It is, you know, when you are talking, you are talking what you know. When you are listening, then you are getting what you did not know. So it is important for us to listen so that we can get what we did not know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. You made the whole subject very easy. Thank you for explaining it and, you know, about the active just to, listening. Just to add up on what Charles has said, I think also listening saves a lot of time. Active listening saves a lot of time in an engagement. Yes, you're right. It saves a lot of time. Anyone else would like to share? Okay. We'll get back to our class. The purpose of listening. Uh, now we were discussing on why is listening so important. Uh, one said uh, it saves a lot of time. It uh, it okay. It helps us to understand each other. Growing years, people used to say. One second. Let me open the chat message. Okay. Uh, for some reason, it's taking time to open. Okay, so I see Asha Rani has posted a message. Okay, it helps us to understand each other. Growing up years, people used to say, listen twice as much as you speak. True. So listening is very important. Uh, Yes, there's uh, there's a purpose, uh, you know, because it serves a number of possible purpose in listening. So we have listed few purpose here in active listening. Let me see if I have that on the slide. Yeah, yeah. So the purpose of listening. The first point here we see to specifically focus on the message being communicated, avoiding distraction and preconception. So it helps us, you know, uh, to focus on the message that has been conveyed to us, where we can avoid the distractions that is coming up. The second we see to gain a full and accurate understanding into the speaker's point of view and ideas. So the very purpose here is where we can understand the speaker correctly. And we can understand from what point of view or uh, that he is trying to convey or the idea, the vision that he is trying to convey or trying to deliver it to us. The third point we see is to critically access what has been said. To critically access what has been said. So we will see that more in the critical thinking when we cover on critical thinking. And the fourth point we see is to observe the non-verbal signals accompanying what has been said to enhance understanding. To observe the non-verbal signals. So when we look at a person, we, we just don't only pay attention to the words that he's saying, but overall we look at the person, we look at his body language, the tone, and what he's speaking for us to understand the non-verbal signals that the person is trying to convey. 
and it enhances our understanding. And the fifth point we see is to show interest, concern and concentration. So we also convey the person, hey, what you're saying or what you're sharing is actually helping me to understand or this is something that I am interested in or this is something that I'm concerned about. Let me concentrate and learn from it. Now, the sixth point is to encourage the speaker to communicate fully, openly and honestly. So the very purpose of our listening is, yes, the, when we pay attention, it also encourages the speaker in communication, where he can speak honestly, where he can share his heart openly to each of us. And the seventh point here listed, we see that to develop a selflessness approach putting the speaker first. It shows that, like, you know, we respect you, we honor you. Please go ahead and share what you have prepared for. Now, the eighth point here we see is to arrive at a shared and agreed understanding and acceptance of both sides' view. So we come at a conclusion, like we agree, we understand, and we accept of both sides' view. So all this is conveyed by a reformation of words, by simple actions or sounds that we utter, and by our body language as well. So often our main concern in, um, you know, in listening is to, uh, it shows in the way we respond. Uh, respond. So we can only respond when we have actively heard through what this person had to say so that you know um, we can give a correct response to what the person shared so effective listening requires concentration and the use of the other senses it need not be just our hearing or the spoken words but listening is not at the same time as hearing But in order to listen effectively, we need to use more than just our ears. Our body language, the way we convey the words, the actions, the affirmation, the smile, everything counts. Uh, eye to eye contact, many things. So with that, we will go get into the principle of listening. So we see that a good listener will not only listen what has been said but he, he also understands what has been not said through the non-verbal language through the body language and other things so he is open and he is watching is focused and overall understanding is trying to get so effective listening is therefore involves our observation of our body language and noticing the inconsistencies between the verbal and the non-verbal messages and as well as just what has been said at a given moment for example if someone tells you that they are happy with their life but through uh, 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 you know with tears in their eyes or you know uh, credit teeth so we should consider that the verbal and the non-verbal message are not matching and not going along and that's when we need to know that there's something wrong with this person that you need to check with or talk to and find if they need any help. So listening is therefore not just a matter of using your ears to the words that's been conveyed, but it also involves your eyes and the other senses to understand the person uh, from the tone that he conveyed, the body language, you know, there are other things that involves for us to understand that person, what exactly he's trying to say. So here we see the 10 principles of effective listening. Let me put up the slide. Okay. 
Here we go. So when we talk about the 10 principles for effective listening, the first one in the list is stop talking. Don't talk. Just listen. Why do you think we should not talk? Anyone in the class? I think it causes distraction and uh, somebody might end up losing focus. Yes. Anyone else? So that we are able to understand completely what that person wants to say. We can interrupt and, you know, miss out on the thing that he wants to or she wants to communicate. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Abney. Yeah. It's very important to listen so that we understand the person from what point is he trying to talk or what is he trying to convey or how can we be of help to that person. So Mark Twain says this way, if we were supposed to talk more than we listen, we would have two tongues and one ear. Isn't it? That's something nice. It makes us to ponder and think. With that, we will move on to the second point. Prepare yourself to listen. Prepare yourself to listen. So we need to relax. Now, why? how can this point be useful to us? Can anyone in the class unmute and share? Can I say something, Pastor? Yes, please. Preparation or preparing yourself to listen uh, now brings you to, to a level of concentration to a level that you, even the, the person that you are listening to uh, is going to know that you have given them their time because you will emotionally um, lay down all other things that are going, were disturbing you. Maybe you had something in the brain that was you were thinking. Maybe there are some things that were absorbing your thoughts. You, when you prepare to listen, that means also those ones are laid off and you are focusing on the person you're going to listen to. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for sharing that. Yes, prepare yourself to listen is just giving that, we are prepared to give that time to that person and listen to what that person shares. And we're not going to allow any kind of distraction to disturb us or we're not going to interrupt the other person unless and until it is needed to clarify something for a better understanding. Okay, but otherwise we're going to listen. So to listen, we need to prepare our mind. We need to get our mind trained to listen to the other person and try to avoid any kind of thoughts that could um, interrupt our uh, focus on listening or, or, uh, or to concentrate what the person is trying to say so that we can understand that person better and we can try to give uh, share our inputs or just be there to help and assist that person. Okay, so with that, we'll move on to the third point, which talks about put the speaker. Something on that preparation. Sorry. Yes, Can I yes. Add something? please go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. Proper preparation also instills confidence and encouragement on both parties when they are talking or engaging. Yes, thanks, Kennedy. Yes. Okay, but that. We will move on to the third point. Put the speaker at ease. Help the speaker to feel free to speak. Now, how do we do that? Anyone in the class can unmute and answer. I think this still goes back to the 
the second the the, the second the, the, the point two because you have to create an environment that is ambient that has ambience where you can easily talk without minimum distraction where you can sit properly and have the right attention and even develop good eye contact yes yes thanks kennedy for sharing yes even the atmosphere matters if in case we set a atmosphere which is very noisy then the person who wants to share the art out may have to face a lot of disturbance or distractions yes we need to see to it that even the atmosphere is set right for the person to speak not by rushing words, by giving attention. I'm just opening the chat. Just give me a minute. We have some things here. By concentrating. Okay, Kunglu shares, preparing to listen shows that we are open to other people's idea. That is on the second point. Okay. And Asha says, not by rushing the speaker. Okay. And Sidan shares that by giving attention. Yes. Can I say something about putting someone at ease? Yes, please. Um, yes, Charles. Go ahead. Put someone at ease is like you 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 gain their their confidence, but also they feel that you are around, you are with them, and the, and that the, they are not on judgment especially if it is something like a counseling session and you're going to listen to them they are not in a court they are not they are not going to be following rules like they are supposed to speak according to this rule and this rule so when someone is put at ease then he he is going to flow putting someone at ease makes the the person who is speaking to flow well not not really being intimidated, not feeling intimidated. Thank you. Right. That's exactly is needed. Thanks, Charles, for sharing that. The third point by putting the speaker at ease. So with that, we will move on to the fourth point, which says remove distraction. Remove distractions where focus on what has been said. So it is very important how to remove the distraction. How can we be focused and what has been said? Anyone in the class would like to unmute and share on this point? Share your views on the fourth point. Just, uh, uh, just that we stop doing whatever we are doing and uh, maintain that posture min and eye contact and everything what we are learning put into practice right that time so that uh, the other person feels free to talk and we show that concern and show that we want to listen. Feel that per make that person feel that we really want to listen to what you want to say. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Avni, for sharing that view. OK, Arison, uh, yes, you can go ahead, please. OK, Arison. one other aspect you know, I'm looking at right now is that it is possible for us to look at a physical aspect of um, removing a distraction. But one other aspect I'm looking at is removing distraction emotionally. You know, there's a tendency, you know, for us, you know, to be communicating with someone and our minds are not there. So anything that is going to make you, you know, think outside, you know, the communication you're, at, you know, you're having with that person, then you may just want to, like, take it off and have a total concentration on what the person is telling you or what the person is trying to communicate with you so that you have a valid information, you know, to give back, you know, when it is your time, you know, to share. Thank you. Thank you, Arison. That was a valid point that we can look into it. I also see Christopher's hand has been raised. Yes. So I think uh, in this, uh, I think it's being mentioned about uh, you know going to a quiet place, and um, uh, so that would uh, that would be one of the you know ways of uh, removing distractions. But the other thing also is uh, you know in the current. Um, and the present time, 
I think the mobile phone is, is sometimes a big distraction. Yeah. So uh, if it's an important meeting, then you know we we actually we actually you know uh, you know indicate to the person who's speaking to us that you know we're going to put the phone on silent mode and uh, you know give give undivided attention to that to that person instead of you know getting constant beeps and getting calls uh, coming through the mobile phone. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christopher, for sharing that valid point. I think that's the major distraction that we need to avoid in this era. Thank you. Yes, Can I add yes, okay, please. Thank you. Uh, even in the sitting, the sitting posture, um, for instance, if you are a man and you are going to 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 listen to a woman and they are wearing maybe a skirt that is above the knee and you know it will distract you 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 can see in a way that you are going not to see the knees and the thighs to to make sure that you are not going you yourself to be distracted and if you are to sit outside and you are and there are cars moving about you make sure that this they are not going to become a distraction. You can try a place where you will not be seeing directly onto the moving vehicles. If it is in a school, uh, then you you might you might need a place where uh, the people are not going to be entering in. They are not going to be knocking, knocking, so that the distractions are removed. But also, in addition to Christopher's point of telephone. There is also television. Maybe you are in a room and then there is television. Then yeah, it is, I think to me, it would be advisable even to remove the television so that you are able to listen attentively. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for sharing different, uh, you know, distractions, how we can avoid in a setting. Yeah, it all depends on the setting, the atmosphere, where exactly are we sitting for a conversation or for a conference, for a meeting. Yes. When we want to focus or being focused on what the other person says is like, you know, we can avoid all these uh, unnecessary distractions that could come our way. But that we will move on to the fifth point where we can empathize, where we can try to understand the other person's point of view. So how do we empathize? How do we understand the other person's point of view? If there are any, any two from the class can unmute and share your point of view on how to empathize so that we can understand the other person from the point that they are trying to share or the point that they are trying to speak. Can I say something about the non-verbal, rather the verbal, uh, when you were sharing and you talked about, uh, thank you, I hear you. Now, if maybe you want to emphasize something, uh, maybe you, you would ask a question like, did I hear you correctly? Were you saying like this? Maybe you, you, you get part of the, of the sentence that they spoke and then you, you ask a question did I hear you this? Kindly repeat for me this. That's what I think would help emphasize the question, uh, rather the, the conversation, so that the point is really emphasized. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Anyone no, no, that? No. Yes. I think by, I... by inviting them cordially and making them feel accepted. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, is there anyone? Yeah, I think the other, the other thing is Can also the, the, yes. the other thing is also the non-verbal uh, uh, body language. Uh, um, in some cases, you know, when we are when we are talk, when you know when, when we are listening, and um, you know we are uh, not concentrating, we may be you know not really uh, showing uh, empathy. So I mean I've 
I've had some, you know, certain times I, you know, when I've talked about serious, serious things uh, to someone, and the person has has kind of switched off, and um, you know, they've, uh, as maybe before the before we talk about the serious things, there is, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a time where you know there may be, a, it may be there may be something humorous happening, so you know, there is a smile, and then. When, I, when we talk about the serious thing again, the smile is there, you know. So uh, it is sort of uh, it shows that the person is distracted and is not uh, is not even uh, you know being a part of the conversation. So to be really uh, em to really shows empathy, we not need to be able to uh, you know also uh, demonstrate um, the, uh, the 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 correct uh, non uh, non verbal uh, communication. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christopher, for sharing on that point. Well, with that, I think we can stop with this. Okay, and the next five points we can share and discuss it out in the next class. Um, we can end this session with a word of prayer. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll pray. Dear God, we thank you. Thank you for this hour that you give us week after week where we can develop the skills that is needed for each of us, Lord, with a better understanding, where each one can be equipped so that we can be excellent in our work, in our ministry, in the area that you have called each one of us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are doing a great work in us. The God who called each one of us is faithful enough to lead us, guide us, and strengthen us. Father, we surrender and commit each of us into your hands, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless and thank you so much for joining in today's session. Have a great day and a weekend. God bless. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.